We are back with the director of Radiograph of a Family, Firoze Kosrovani. Firoze, welcome to AFI. Congratulations on the film. Terrific. It's just a wonderful film. Thank you. I'm very grateful to hear this nice words about my film. <laughs> well, it's, it's, believe me, it's well-deserved. I think your film is just so beautifully crafted and put together and I look forward to talking to you about your creative process. But I, I wanted to begin by just taking you back in time as the film does uh, to, you know, maybe when you were uh, a, a young, younger person um, growing up with your parents. And I'm just curious, you know, when did you first become aware that your parent, parents were two very different people um, and living in some ways two very different lives. Um, and yet, of course, they were together. Uh, so I'm just curious how, how that first became part of your consciousness and how did you sort of figure that out as a young person? Um, I lived this experience, this is my life experience and all my childhood memories that I had one foot on one camp and one foot in another camp under a roof in a house in Tehran. So this was uh, something that I began to learn how to maintain this balance of uh, very different poles in our house. And um, I love them both very much, but I knew that it's almost uh, different worlds. And I was trying to, uh, to understand the values of each, uh, each world. Um, so it was a challenge to be in the middle of two ideologies between two different lifestyles. And it um, gave me a capacity of adaptation as well. I'm just curious, you know, in the course of any given day, did you find yourself, you know, kind of siding with one parent over the other or just feeling a, a stronger connection to one parent or the other? And then maybe the next day it kind of switched back the other way or what was that like? Yeah, in each phase of my life, it was an inclination from one to another. But um, when I grew up, I was um, aware of my uh, tendency to my father's world as the values for art for and all uh, his love for also visual arts and music. In the, uh, the like poetry, you know, that Iran is the land of <laughs> poetry. And my father uh, had both uh, best of two cultures together, westernized and Iranian. And, uh, but uh, I had enough respect and uh, affection for my mother's world as well. Um, Later, when I uh, began to work in the art field, I could um, uh, see the situation as an art material. So I was trying to, um, to make an artwork with the, this situation. So that was the beginning of the idea of doing this film. You know, making a personal film can be very difficult, very challenging. Um, and I would say, you know, maybe for some people, it's deceptively so. It's like, okay, well, you're making a film about your family. You know that subject, in, you know, inside and out. Um, you know the raw material. You know the people involved. But there are really big creative challenges with making a personal film. Um, can you talk a bit about what some of those challenges were for you as you went about the whole process from beginning to end? 
Yes, I really experienced the deepest uh, challenges, fears, and uh, also the pleasure <laughs> during the years of making this film. Um, so it was difficult also to confront many deep feelings, resentments, sufferances. And this is obvious because um, um, it was one time in my life that I had, I had enough distance to deal with the past. And um, so it was the best moment of doing this film. Maybe if I did it as the first film or many years ago, it was totally different. So um, uh, when I try to um, deal with two emblematic protagonists, not uh, it's just my parents, uh, it was very uh, at the same time playing with something which is is not as dramatic as uh, one can uh, uh, think. So I was trying to understand this is not just my life, this is my country's life, this is many families' life, uh, that they experience the same thing, the sa same revolution, the same war. The sa so um, as I was transforming my individual experience to a collective experience, uh, that was a mm, good challenge, creative one. Yeah, I wanted to, to ask about the, you know, the social and political context into which you were born and, and that you grew up in, you know, talk a bit about um, your relationship to Iranian society and, you know, political and social structures and, you know, how, how that relationship might have changed when you went away to school, you know. And that was uh, understanding of uh, the, um, the time and the uh, situation um, that we were living from my childhood that I wanted to give, to, to have no demonization of the views of uh, differing views that, um, polarize the world in Iran. So as I understand um, that our house re reflects exactly what is outside of our house. So um, that was something that um, is uh, good to understand. This is not just at home, it's the same outside home. But my family exceptionally represents very good uh, the, uh, these differences. So they are in opposite sides and they, they have um, very uh, different, but also um, I could understand both worlds because I can give reason, I can find why they become, or my, my mother became revolutionary, more religious and why my father remained stable and very um, tolerant. Um, so socially I was uh, engaged as an artist, not as an activist. Um, and still I'm very um, happy to have um, my word of art because if not, it was so different. So this film has a very calm and a very deep grammar, not a very uh, like slogan or not giving any um, position or uh, on revolution on what has happened. This is storytelling as a child. So a child is in a very, um, um, balanced um, position to view everything. That's really interesting because I think the film itself reflects that balance. I mean, for me, there's a certain classical structure 
and tone to the film that, and also even just the frame, the way you shoot it um, and edit it, that is really, it's impressive on the one hand, and it's, it's a way into the story. So um, talk a bit about, you know, it's, it's like a beautiful piece of classical music, I guess I would, or, or architecture. Um, talk it's about, nice <laughs> well, talk about how you, and balance is a key part of that. Talk about how you balance the different elements of the, of the film, not just, you know, your mother's story and your father's story, but you know, you have original footage that you shot in on location at that wonderful house. And I hope you can talk a bit about how you found that location and, and how it was important to the film. And you have archival footage and you have, um, you know, a script that you wrote in which you kind of imagine what your mother might have said, what your father might have said. So talk about some of those different elements and how you achieved um, balance in the film. Yeah. Um... It, it was very difficult to work with different materials that I wanted to interwove and very um, well uh, to put together or to have contrast um, or harmony. So that was 1,000 uh, choices that I had to make. <laughs> and um, the balance is uh, due to um years of working on it so um, it's um every single word in the film has its weight so i i was waiting every single frame every single word so to have nothing over exposed overwhelm or over so it was uh, just uh, to calculating everything and I have a very symmetrical structure. So I, I know that if I put something here, I have to put <laughs> at the right <laughs> corner, uh, the same thing. And um, so it was a kind of engineering of the timeline. Talk a bit about uh, writing the script and kind of putting yourself in, in the shoes of your father and your mother as you were writing that and obviously you're you know you're going back to a time when you you weren't even born yet uh in some cases um and they're you know courting and and they're you know getting married and so on so how did you figure out what to say um and you know what were sort of the guiding rules or principles that you might have followed as you wrote your script yeah, you know, um, it was a very difficult choice that when I wanted to add uh, uh, fictionalized uh, dialogues, so uh, to stage dialogue, um, uh, I complicated the whole storytelling because it was very easy the first time that I have written and the whole story on first uh, person narrator. Then I realized that I don't like it. It's um, too much talking. And then it was ordinary things that uh, was no challenging in it. So I thought to um, enter in this um, challenge. I began to write uh, dialogues uh, that might have said my parents, but everything is based on true story because I experienced uh, this kind of conversations and um, something is really I have heard or my mother told me after and uh, so I just um, put some dramatic um, or cinematographic um, intonation to the dialogues. And, but, and, yeah. and what about my the, mother recognized uh, everything in the film and she said it's very authentic for her so that was good i'm wondering if you in researching the film and in talking to your mother 
if you learned things about your parents or about your upbringing that you didn't know? If I, I did, didn't. Did you learn things that, that you didn't know about when you were living through them, but you, 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 you experienced some sort of revelations uh, in doing the research? Yeah, of course, of course. Um, and some things that I have um, imagined and then I thought it's better to ask my mother. And um, sometimes I left my imaginations and I thought this was what I have. Um, this is my childhood fantasies. It could be more real than reality. Why not? And what about, what about the decision to, to put her in the film in that final scene, which is really kind of in some ways shocking, but it, it also feels totally logical and natural in a way. Um, but it, it certainly is a part of the film, but it also stands apart from the film. Uh, I was thinking from the beginning, I knew what is the ending of the film. Uh, finding the beginning was uh, more difficult than uh, the ending because I thought that I would deal with time, uh, time of the film, uh, that we, at some point, we lose the notion of time and we don't know when it is happening, when is. But for me, like uh, to have some um, point of reference, uh, for me, it was after Iran Iraq war, so 88, 1988. And then we jump 30 years later and we see my mother at present time, real mother, real place, real time, and real me. And um, I wanted uh, also to emphasize that my mother is not alone because it could be very sad to find her older and uh, with the backbone, scoliosis at backbone. And so I wanted that uh, we feel that I'm there, but not seeing me. So this is just my hand. And I, I grew up and I'm a filmmaker. So I have my camera at home and I can film my mother uh, in a very documentary style at the end of the film. And what, what's her reaction to the film then? She, she loved the film. She's, uh, she likes very much the storytelling of the film and the pictures that I have chosen from the family album. And the story of the Torah pictures and the reconstruction of the past. Did she know about that when, at the time or you told her about it later? Uh, I uh, transform a mutilated family album that with the rip up, rip out pictures that some parts of glued on the um, paper. So I was trying to complete with my imagination, also exaggerating in a very child, childish um, style. And that is the uh, just one thing that remained from that time. Uh, and I did the reconstruction of the, the, the exact thing that has happened, which were, uh, was made the core idea of the film. And um, then my mother liked uh, the, the final scene of the Lerger painting beyond all has happened and to reconstruct a new reality. Uh, so this is the story, yeah. That's kind of a great ending to the, uh, to the story of the making of the film um, that go, kind of goes beyond the film itself, just hearing about her reaction to, to the film and, and to what you created. I'm just um, curious to hear a bit about the house that you shot in it's, uh, you know, it's almost like its own character in the movie. 
Yeah. Um, and I know we don't have a lot of time left, but I would love to just hear how you how you found this location and how it informed the film itself. Um, I wanted to do the shooting scene scenes uh, in a very stage and very stylistic manner. So um, I tried to find a, a studio to make it in a very, and then uh, fortunately I found this space uh, which is very large and long and so open space because I wanted to uh, have the interior design as uh, to see all uh, the both sides of the house in one tracking. And the idea of the tracking was the scanning the house, scanning inside the house, scanning a country, uh, scanning a body, scanning the history. So um, that uh, place, gave me this opportunity to have an X-ray of uh, transformation, evolution of the house as a metaphor. You know, it's pretty clear that you are equally adept at capturing what I would call documentary moments, but also having the control and the vision of a fiction filmmaker. Are you by chance working on any fiction projects? Um, and also just in general, can you talk about what you're working on, on next? Um, I'm um, at the very beginning of uh, brainstorming and ideas that are coming from um, after Radiograph of a Family. So the, my generation and the extension of the film in time, in our time. So, uh, but I would say that it will be another nonfiction, somewhere between fact and fiction. So again, a personal narrative uh, linked to the topical issue. Well, we can't wait to see that. And I, I think that you're You've certainly established yourself as one of the masters of working in this space between documentary and fiction. And so it's thrilling to me and I'm sure our audience is to hear that there's, there's another film in you that you're just getting started on and we can't wait to see what that becomes. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, Unfortunately, I think we are out of time, but I, I wanna thank you again, Firaze, for being with us and for this wonderful film. I, I wanna thank our audience for, for being here with us today. And I wanna urge them to please tell all their friends that this film is available to screen until the end of the festival. We'd love to hear from you on social media, at hashtag AFI docs. And please join us for more great films and virtual events at docs.afi.com. Thanks again, Firaze. Congratulations. And I hope you enjoyed that film. So long. Bye. <laughs>